This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar taking a look at how to create animated titles with Apple Motion. In this excerpt, I'll show you how to take an existing Final Cut Pro 10 template, move it to Motion, make changes, and bring it back to Final Cut Pro 10. Let's get ourselves started. I've created a generic project and I'm going to be working specifically out of the Titles browser. And just so I can find something, let's look for a title called Drifting. Right here, if I hover my mouse over it, we can see that the title drifts from side to side. If I double click it to load it into the timeline, I'll select something that makes it nice and big, click OK, Shift Z so I can fit it inside the timeline. And as I drag across, we can see that our title moves. Now, if I select the title and go up to the inspector and click on text, I could change the font and the font size here. I could change the color of the text here, but I'm doing it on a one-time basis. I have to make that same change everywhere. Let's say that I want to use this title in a lot of different places. And or I have a team of editors that are working on different shows and I want to have the same look and feel to this title across all of my projects. Rather than have to change this one title at a time, it'd be really nice if I could change the master. To do that, I'm going to right mouse click or control click on the title and says, notice I can open a copy in motion. I'll select that. Notice that it allows me to open a copy. There's nothing that I can do that changes the source file that Apple supplies. That's always in pristine, unchangeable condition. What I can do is to create copies and modify the heck out of them, which is what I want to do now. As soon as I say open a copy in motion, Final Cut starts motion and loads it into motion. That's what we see here. But if I hide motion inside Final Cut, notice what's happened also. It's created a copy of this. So there's my original, there's the copy. Final Cut both created the copy and loaded that copy into Motion. There are four principal areas inside Motion. There's the viewer, where we see stuff, the timeline, the layers panel, and the utility window. In Final Cut, the timeline is essential. In Motion, I find the timeline to be difficult to work with which is probably one of the reasons that I don't use After Effects well, because After Effects is all built around its timeline. So if After Effects is your friend, you'll probably like the timeline a lot. If you have trouble getting your brain wrapped around After Effects, you'll find the timeline to get in your way, and it's not necessary. To make it disappear, press the F6 key. F6 toggles the timeline on and off. If the F key does not work, go up to the Apple menu, go down to System Preferences, and go to Keyboard, and make sure that this first option is turned on in the keyboard, which is where we're using the F1 and the F2 keys as standard function keys, at which point motion will work fine. So we've got the Viewer window up here. This is where we watch our projects. The Timeline, which we can reveal or hide by pressing the F6 key. This is the Layers panel. The Layers panel is exactly like Layers inside Photoshop. We're going to be working here a lot, but we can hide it by pressing the F5 key. F5 hides or reveals the Layer panel. We can also hide it by clicking this icon right down here. To the left of the Layers panel is the Utility window. The Utility window allows us to import files from our computer, to access the library, which we'll talk more about in a minute, and the inspector, which is where we make changes. When I'm creating my projects, I'm in this a lot. When I'm making final tweaks, I may or may not be in it. You can hide it by clicking this icon right down here. See how I can give myself some more room on the screen? Keyboard shortcut is Command-1. will allow me to hide or reveal that particular window. There's one more part of the interface I need to explain, which is this area right down here. Let me zoom in. This is called the playhead. This is just like the playhead inside Final Cut. And we hit the spacebar to play it, spacebar to stop. The JKL keys work the same as well. This shows us where we are in our project. There is the very beginning of it. But you see this dark gray bar right below it. This is the mini timeline. This allows us to adjust the timing of elements so we can determine where they start and where they end and the duration of, say, an effect. 
this is a really important part of the motion interface because it allows us to change the timing of what we see in our project. So let's go through here and let's modify this. In order to modify it, we need to understand how to interpret what we see in the Layers panel. As we go up to the Layers panel, see this twirl down area here? This is called a group. It's a folder. That's all it is, just a fancy name for a folder. And when I click the twirl down, I can see that there's three layers inside it. This is an effect which allows us to move the text. See that T? That indicates that it's text. That's our title text. And this is our subtitle text. So if I wanted to change our title text, let's just zoom back out again here and click on it. Notice that I've now selected the layer which selects the text. We can make changes to this in a variety of places, but I want to introduce you to the next big interface element, which is the inspector. The inspector is where we make changes. And we could change the text, or if we had selected a filter, we could change a filter. Or if we had selected a behavior, we change a behavior. Or we can change the properties of an element. We'll work with some of these in today's session. I want to work with text. I want to change the text. Notice the font. I don't want it to be Futura. I want it to be something really different. Let's look for... Doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo. There it is. Brush script. Now you've got to admit, that's a different look for title than for subtitle. Well, let's click on subtitle. First rule inside motion is to select something and do something to it. So I'm going to select the layer that I want to change. And notice that by selecting the layer, there's a selection box around everything that's contained in that layer. I don't have to worry about double-clicking on the text in a viewer. It's just easier to select the layer. Go back to the inspector, go back to text, and we'll change this to brush script as well. So we'll change that to brush script. But now I'm going to get really fancy. I'm going to click on appearance. Appearance allows me to make it 3D text, which I'm not going to talk at all about today. But I can change the color of the typeface. I'll click the downward pointing arrow, and I can change this into some color that I really like. I'm going to go for a, a pale gold, light yellow somewhere in there. I'll pick that. Now, look at what I've done. I've kept the animation. I've kept everything that I don't yet understand, which is how the heck does this move? But I've changed the font, and I've changed the color of the font. If I could, if I had zero artistic taste, I would add an outline or, worse, add a glow. I could also add the drop shadow. And why Apple puts that which is so essential, the drop shadow, so far down in the appearance category, I do not understand. I'll speak strongly to them next time I see them. And layout controls allow us to adjust things that we most of the time never have to adjust. So the format allows us to change the typeface. These are the same controls that we're used to inside Final Cut 10. Appearance allows us to change the color and add a drop shadow. So we've made all the changes that we want to make. To this, it's all ready to go back to Final Cut. What do we do? You go up to File, and you say Save. Because we sent it from Final Cut to Motion, to get it back to Final Cut, all you have to do is save it. And it says, okay, so what do you want to do? Do you want to save the original member that's called Drifting Copy? Well, that doesn't really tell me a whole lot. I want to create my own file as a duplicate. And I'm going to call this Drifting Brush because it's using Brush Script. Now, notice the category. There's some different categories that I can save this in. I've created a new category called Larry. All of the custom effects or custom titles or custom anything that I create, I have put in a title called a category called Larry. And if you want to create your own category, select New Category and give it a name. You don't actually have to name your category Larry. You could call it My Stuff or Fred or Ethel or any other name that you want. But I'm going to put it in Larry. We're not going to assign it to a theme. We'll leave these unchecked and click Published. That's it. Now let's switch back to Final Cut. Inside Final Cut, look at this. There's Drifting and there's Drifting Brush. I didn't have to restart Final Cut. It automatically loaded it. And if I click on the category called Larry, there's the category. 
There's build in and build out, and there's lower thirds. There's the category, and there's the drifting brush. And notice it has the correct fonts and the color. Now over here, I haven't changed that which is in the timeline. I've only changed that which is inside the title browser. Let's just delete this and move this over. By the way, you don't really need to delete it. As was made clear at the 9 o'clock session, I could simply drag it over and replace it. That would work too. We'll just replace. But in this case, I wanted to delete it just to show that I could. And now there it is. Look at that. Title and subtitle. And if I go up to the text, I can or double click on the text. I can change the text. Call it my. This, this is exactly the same as any other title in a title browser, except we have been able to modify it. This is the easiest way to start to get used to working with motion because now I've got this template that I can use anywhere in my project. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar taking a look at how to create animated titles using Motion 5. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 202. By the way, Membership is a great value when you need to stretch your training dollars. A membership to our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,400 movies, hundreds of hours, all in-depth and all up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.